Okay, so this is going to be part two of the film I started with this morning, uh, where we actually did the bathroom area and put the holes in the wall. I'm actually going to reiterate how to do that in this design. Uh, this is actually a previous design um, that I was kind of playing around with before we actually went into the actual design of this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and use this again um, by going into and starting again with putting holes in the walls. Okay, what I mean by that is openings. I'm going to put an opening up in this area between the dining area and the office. I'm going to put one down in this area for the pantry, and I'm also going to open up these two walls just to reiterate how we did that. <clears throat> I'm going to start by going to my component on my architectural tab. I'm going to go to Little Family. I'm going to go into my English Imperial. I'm looking for openings. Okay, I'm going to try to get all these done in one shot. So I'm going to double click on this. And from here, I'm going to go opening, uh, opening door. And I'm just going to say open. Now, in my case, I did a lot where I did some, some modifications up in here. And I changed some of mine by going and doing some du duplications. Um, they have stuff for parking spaces, things like that. But in this case, um, I changed these here. I got a 36 by 84. I'm going to keep this one here. So I'm going to add two of these. And then I'm going to duplicate to create the other two. So I want to re keep reemphasizing re this duplication stuff. I'm going to add the first one here. I'm going to put a little 36 uh, by 7 foot doorway or opening right here between the dining room and the office area. Okay, now this one I'm going to kind of eyeball on the place. We may have to adjust a little bit later. I'm going to put it at about, oh, I guess 2 foot 3, be 27 inches. That's about right. And I'm just going to leave it right there from the center of that wall. Now, the good thing is this tool is still active. So I'm going to do the, exactly the same opening down here into my pantry. Okay, now in this case, though, I'm going to drop this right here because I want this to be flush against this wall. Now, what I'm probably going to do right here, just, just to show you I can do this, I'm going to move this out a little bit, and I'm going to go to my Modify. Okay, and the tool I want to get really used to is this Align tool. I'm going to align the edge of this door here to the edge of this wall. Okay, now in this case, the wall ended up moving on me. So I'm going to control Z that. I'm actually going to do the wall first and then hit the door so the door moves. So whatever one you hit first is the one that's going to stay stationary. The thing you hit second will move. Okay, so again, that's little things I've been learning as I'm playing along with this. But now I have my walkway into my pantry, a three-foot wide entryway to get in and out. And eventually we'll put some shelves in here. Okay, I also have my entryway between my dining area to my office. Now I want to add two more. We did this in the last one, so we've already done it. This is just a rehash. But I'm going to go ahead again to my architectural tab and escape a couple times. I'm going to go to component, load family, and again I'm going to do door opening and say open. Now in this case I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to do a duplicate. This is what I did the last time I did this presentation. I'm going to make this um, 120 inches long, oops, that's 120 feet, 120 inches uh, by 108 inches, which is 9 feet tall, uh, wall opening. Okay, I'm going to say okay. Now, I've got the name changed, but now what i got to do from here is i got to change the width. Okay, so 7 feet, I'm going to go here to, oops, whoa, whoa. I'm going to go here to 9 feet for the height, uh, and for the width, I'm going for 10 feet. And I'm going to say OK, and then I'm going to slide over here, and again, I'm going to put this in a position that puts this really kind of over to the corner. So I'm going to bring this as close to this wall as I can, so right about there. Okay, that looks pretty good. This will end up making it into a post, and that's fine. You could move this like we did before, and again, go to Modify. Do your line tool, align this edge to this edge of the wall, align, actually sorry, the wall to this edge, and that will give you the same thing. Okay? So there is that first opening. I should have a little pop out right there. That's part of this. Really, if you were to look at this in the build of a house, there is a beam right here and a post. This is the post. There'd be a beam above this to keep this from caving in. There's going to be a post under here that's going to be surrounded by drywall. That will help keep another beam up here because we're going to have another post down here, probably in some corner. All right, so if you're thinking about from a design structure, that's what this is all about. Now I'm going to go back and do this again. Hit escape a few times. Architecture. Component. Load family, <clears throat> excuse me, 
opening door, open. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go to edit type. I'm going to go ahead and start with, again, a duplicate. This time, though, I'm going to go 120 by, uh, let me see, excuse me, I'm going to go 144. I'm going to do a 12 foot opening by 108. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the two because I don't need a two there. I'm going to say OK. Then I'm going to change this from 10 to 12. I'm going to say OK. Now, this one actually may be 11 and a half. I'm not positive on that. But we're going to put this kind of right here in the middle of the wall, like so. Okay. Now, in this case, um, let me just double check that that actually worked. I need to go back to my edit because it doesn't seem like it's the right side. Nope, it didn't take the 12 feet. Dang it. So that should be 12 feet. Apply and OK. OK, I'm going to back up. And now what I'm going to do again is I'm going to do the same thing. I am going to actually go here and do an align. But this time I'm going to go to, in this case, I am going to go to align. I am going to align um, this edge. No, excuse me. I'm going to align because I want the first one is I'm going to align to this edge here. If it allows me, oh, probably won't let me do it. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to have to drag this because I want to line it right up next to this. But we're going to just go to something like that. So there is that corner post. We have a little bit of an entryway door right there. So that gives me all the openings I need right there. Okay. Now, again, this is an older model, so I don't have the stuff I have in the first video, like the bathroom stuff. But I'm still going to come up here and hit my little house for 3D. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to kind of blow in on this so you can see this. Okay, now I changed the wall, so the ceiling's going to sit on top of this. This is a little bit different than the other one, because the other one's at 10 foot, the 10 foot walls. This one's only at 9, and that's the reason for the difference, okay? Um, as you can see, I don't have all my windows and doors in there. But again, this is all you're doing to create openings. To rotate, I'm going to go to my little tool right here. I'm going to do my orbit tool, kind of drag, kind of keep, oops, sorry, rotating. I'm going to rewind here. And I'm just going to keep trying to rotate this house around so you can see it. Okay. But there's my pantry way entry. And if I continue around the corner here and I'll slide this over, there is my entryway from the dining to the office area in the corner here. Okay. And again, this is the old model. So, you know, please be forgiving of this. Um, I've been working on the other one, but I, I already put everything in there. I didn't want to get it out. So I'm going to go ahead and use an old model to show you how to do the kitchen now. So I'm going to come back here to my main floor. Okay. So now what we're going to do is start building up our kitchen. Now what we're going to do today is just focus on getting cabinetry and our appliances in. We will not get the countertop because it will have to be custom. Okay. Same with the island. I'll have to find a way to create a custom island. And we'll get to that in a subsequent video. Okay. So I'm going to start off by going in here again. to the same way I've done before. I'm going to go up to my architecture. I'll hit escape a few times to turn everything off. I'm going to go to uh, component. Load family. But now instead of doing the openings... What I'm going to start with, actually, I'm going, to, I'm going to bring in my three appliances, and I'll just kind of move them around as necessary and fit my cabinetry in. Actually, I mean, it just depends how you want to build this. I actually could do a couple different things. I could, I'm going to start with probably a oven-stove combination, uh, a range, and I'm going to put it in the middle of that angled wall, and then I guess what I'll do is I'll build off of that. So we'll center everything off of it and then work our way around it. Okay, so in order to get a range, I'm going to go down to where it says specialty equipment. I'm going to go to the word domestic, double click. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and I did a mid-range on my last one. Um, in this case, I think I'll stay in that one. But I think actually I'll, I'm going to look at the high-end stuff. The higher-end stuff, it's just more expensive, okay, basically. Um, what I'm going to look here is I'm going to look for just a 30-inch a range because that's what I had before in the last model. Just see if this one's got a little bit more detail to it. It's, it's going to be the same size. Um, there is a 36-inch range. It's pretty nice. But I believe that would be a little too big for this one. Um, this is a six-burner. The one being shown in the actual uh, thing is shown like a four burner. So I'm going to stay in that 30 inch, which would give me this one here. Okay. I'm going to say open. Now when it comes in, again, I have to get it to the back there. I'm going to say rotate after placement. So I'm going to get it basically on this wall. There's my middle. And then I'm going to start to rotate it. Now in this case, I'm hoping if I rotate to right there, that looks 45 degrees. Hit escape. Now I've got it backwards. So what I'm going to do here is, um, 
Oh, I was hoping I could just flip this thing around. Actually, can I flip around? I'm going to modify. I'm going to uh, rotate. So I'm going to go from here. I'm just going to take this and rotate it 180 degrees. Uh, where's my 180? Maybe not. Maybe it's 135. Somewhere in that range. That looks about right, right there. Yes, 135. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Control Z that. So let's try that one more time. You can rotate this range around. So I'm going to go to here. Um, and actually go to this point here and rotate. Uh, let's go from here. Let me go this way. If I go from here, I'm going to rotate it straight over the other way. There we go. Okay, now from here, I'm going to have to move it, obviously. Okay, so I need to grab it. I'm going to put it somewhere on this wall right about there. Okay, now in this case here, I'm going to kind of push this away. I uh, don't want to too butt it up to the wall because usually you'd have a little bit of space there, not so much, but just a little bit of space like so. And now what I'm going to do is just try to get this to where it is centered on the wall. Now for right now, I don't need the 135 anymore. I'm going to go ahead and take that off because I've locked my other dimensions in place. My wall should not move. I also want to get rid of this range. Okay, And the way you do that is click on the range with a left mouse click. Over here to the right, do an edit type. Now what I'm going to do with the edit type where it says show label, uncheck that, and hit OK. And that will take your range off. Okay? Don't panic that it goes away. Now in this case, I'm going to do a simple modify. Just do a quick measurement from the center of this part to like approximately that corner. I get 210, 930 seconds. Let's go from the center here to approximately this corner. And again, I can eyeball this, but I want to get it kind of right. So what I'm going to do is just kind of slide maybe a little bit up the wall, about right about here. I'm going to get pretty close, about to there. I get 2, 9, 17, 3, 17, 2, Okay, there we go. So it's locked in there. Okay, so now I have it centered up. It looks good. I'm going to keep it right there. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of these dimensions. I have it centered. And so now, looking at my three-dimensional model, there is my piece. Okay, that looks like, just like the other one I just used. Um, I believe you can go in and add some detail to it. I'm not sure if you can go in here. You can change all the style here. Um, show label. I'm just looking at anything else you can add in here. You can change this uh, size. Uh, I'll say cancel here. Um, you can also go in here and add some detail to it. Okay, so in this case, it's detail levels medium. I'll go ahead and do fine. So now you can see the great. That's what I was looking for. And then also, if you want some color in here, uh, you can come into here under this style here and do shaded, consistent colors, or realistic. And I'll turn on that realistic so you can at least look at this. Now, if you don't have a really strong computer with a good video card, this may not be very good for you. Okay, these uh, machines I'm using here do have really good video cards, and therefore I can do this without slowing the machine down. Okay, this will be contingent upon your machines. Now, going back into my main floor, okay, I'm going to start building some cabinetry out to the side. Okay, so I'm actually going to start with two base cabinets. And the two base cabinets I'm going to basically bring in are going to be the same cabinet. And what I'm going to do here is these are going to be really narrow because of the way this is kind of designed. It has to come out here because then I have a flat part over here. So I'm going to do some two really narrow ones. They're going to be 12 inches wide, basically on the side of a stove. They're going to have doors on them. So maybe you're storing all your cookie sheets and things of that nature, pots and pans. Some tall items would go into those drawers, okay, right next to, or those, those cabinets right next to the stove. So again, I'll hit escape a few times. I'm going to go ahead and go back into architecture. I'm going to go to component. I'm going to go to load family. I'm going to take my preview up all the way back into the English Imperial. And again, I'm going to go back to casework. Double click. Casework is all your cabinetry. Okay, I'm going to go on the bottom cabinet. In this case, you can start looking at each of the pieces. Okay, if you want to do the drawers, you could. In most cases, since these are so narrow, I'm going to go ahead in this one. And I'm going to go with uh, a single door, 12 inch. Let me see where if I can find it. Uh, cabinet fill, I'll use that in a moment. I don't want the drawer. It's this one I want right here. Base cabinet, single door, sliding drawers. Okay, so that means you probably have sliders built in the inside. I'm going to say open. And again, same thing. I'll do the rotate after placement. I'm just going to kind of replace it right here. And then I'm going to get it to kind of match to that angle there. And the problem is, is I didn't really look at this carefully. Um, let me delete that and do that again. 
part of the problem is I gotta get this to hit the wall. And so what I'll probably do first is you can actually change it to a nine inch or 12 inch. I'll go ahead and place this. Remember where the cursor is located is the back of the cabinet. So I need a space bar of this. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and put it in this position here, kind of put it on the wall. And then I wanna go ahead, oops, I rotate after placement. I should have done that earlier, my fault. Let me do that one more time. As you can see, I gotta go back and get used to this stuff. Uh, I'm playing with it. <clears throat> the 12 inch cabinet's good. Rotate after placement. I'm gonna go ahead, space bar, space bar, place it. And then I'm just gonna kind of make it match if I can. Uh, Come on, be easy for me. I need a 135 degree angle. Come on, can I just type in 135? Yes, I can. And that places that cabinet. Okay, so here's that cabinet there. I'm now gonna just grab it and I'm gonna slide it in here. Now I can tell you right now, it's gonna be pretty flush with actually this front edge right here. So I'm just gonna pull it right next to it. There will be a little gap behind there. And the reason being is that we're gonna have another set of cabinets butting right into that corner. Okay, and that's the only way we're going to make this flush. Otherwise, you're going to have a gap there. Okay, now just to show you that that's there, I'm going to go to my 3D. Um, it looks like my cabinet got put in backwards again. Sorry. Uh, hopefully, I can flip it, which I can. All right, and then what I'm going to do from here is pull it back into its position. And again, this is why I check my 3D so much because sometimes I think I'm in the right position. And suddenly I find, no, I'm not. Okay. Go back to my 3D, and there is the cabinet. Okay, so that's what the cabinet looks like. And I may have to fine-tune this as we go along, and that's not a big deal to do. All right? Uh, if I wanted to, I could also do my Align tool. I could go to Modify. I can go to Align, Stove Edge, this edge, Alignment, and we can say Lock. All right? And I can unlock it later if I need to. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing again. Okay, you could also copy this over if you wanted to. There is a copy tool. Uh, I believe, do, 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 where is the copy? It's in here. Oh, right here. So I can click this tool here and just simply go copy. Okay, and I'm just going to take that over to here and copy a second one. Okay, that way I don't have to repeat this. Um, the better way of doing this, in all truth, I'm going to go ahead and use my alignment tool between this edge and this one. The better way would have been is to actually modify this first, then copy it. What I mean by modify is you'll notice there's no cabinet material. Okay, I'm going to actually put a material on here. And you could be a really fancy and do cherry. They have birch. They have mahogany. I'm going to go with a more newer style home. I'm going to make all my cabinetry white. That seems to be really popular right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this and do clad white. There's the cherry. You can type in different ones and they'll come up. I'm going to say OK. Cabinetry right here. Again, I'm going to change that to clad white. And the reason I should have done that is then I would have been able to apply it and it would have done to both of them. Okay. Now, let me look at this one over here. Let me just see if maybe the copy did take place. It did. Okay. By copying it, that did work. All right. Again, the reason it flashes off and all like that, it could be a little bit with my, my card to have other, one, other files open. But I'm going to just take a real quick peek to make sure both of these are looking good and there is my cabinet with my stove okay so there we go now what will end up happening is we'll eventually have um, a counter that will follow this angle but we'll have to customize and build that ourselves all right all right so going back into my top okay we've got more to go the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead on this side I'm going to put a wall cabinet but I need to button this corner so I'm going to have a cabinet right along this wall and then right over here to the side of it is going to be my dishwasher. Now the cabinet I'm going to bring in here is going to be um, an 18-inch wide cabinet because it's not very much space here. It's going to be a drawer and a door. So again, I'm going to hit escape a few times and you're going to start getting used to this. I'm going to go to architecture, component. Okay, in this case, I'm going to go to load family. And under my casework, I'm looking for... Uh, a door and a single drawer, drawer and drawer right here. Okay, in this case, I'm going to say open. And then I'm going to look underneath here. And I have choices. It has 24, 21, 18. I'm going to go with the 18 inch one, not the 24. It's too wide. So I'm going to go 18 inches. I'm going to get it to where the cursor is on the other side. So I got to go space bar, space bar. Okay, now I'm just going to kind of drop this down. All right, as soon as it touches the wall, I'm going to 
click on it and be done with it. Now I'm going to use, or actually, excuse me, hit escape here. I'm going to use my cursor or my arrow buttons. I'm going to blow up really close to this. And I'm just going to start arrowing it over. Okay, I'm not going to drag it. I'm just going to try to use little small increments to where it looks right about there. That looks pretty darn good. Okay, maybe if you wanted to, you can make one more so they blend right in. That's not too bad. And truthfully, I probably can make this go back a little bit, or I could probably make this go forward just like that. One tick of my up arrow, and there we go. So now that looks nice and smooth. Okay, so they're blended together. Now if I go to my 3D, same thing. There is that right there. Okay, now this is not... These angled kitchens, I'll be up front, I have one in my house, I don't like it because you can only, if you open a drawer, I, uh, this drawer, I can't open this door, okay, and it's really inconvenient, it's not It's not what I like, um, I'd rather have this handle on this side so it opens this way and it opens this way, um, but unfortunately this is the way it comes in, I have not found a way to customize these, okay, if I do, I'll let you know. I also want to make sure that this is in the same color. You can do that from here. If you left click on it, you can also modify in your three-dimensional view by going to edit type. I'm going to change my category to clad white for both the base and the door. I'm going to keep the handles in the brush nickel stainless steel. Okay, so there is that cabinet there. So what I'm going to do is drop in a dishwasher right next to it. So let's go to the main floor. And now what I want to do is I'm going to come in here, I'm going to go to, again, a few escapes, architecture and component, and I'm going to go into load family. Now, this time I need specialty equipment. So I get to my English Imperial, I'm going to slide down to where it says specialty equipment. So this is where a lot of our kitchen stuff is going to be. I double click, domestic, again, I think I'm going to go high end, I got high end taste, what can I say, and I'm going to look for a dishwasher. Okay, um, and they may not have a dishwasher, hood, cooktop, coffee. They don't have a dishwasher in here, unless I am missing it. I don't see it. I see it in alphabetical, so let's go up one. Go to mid-range, and they have a dishwasher right there. Okay, I'm going to take the dishwasher there. I'm going to open that up. Now, again, I'm going to place this where the cursor is located right now is on the upside. I need to arrow it around where it's towards the wall. So space bar, space bar. I'm going to bring this down along the wall. I'm actually going to bring it to, to, right to the middle of the wall, like somewhere right around there, and check. Okay, I'm going to hit escape. Now in this case, what I'm going to do is I want to also, I'm going to keep the DW on there because I do want to know it's a dishwasher, but I do want to double check my materials. Now this dishwasher is pretty small, 24 inch, and I don't want to see if there's one that's bigger, but if you want to get rid of the label, you could, okay? Uh, the appliance is stainless steel. I'm going to do appliance body. I'm also going to do that stainless steel instead of just stainless steel black. I'm going to do the stainless steel semi-polished and say okay, a gasket, etc. Okay, I'm going to say okay. Um, I'm also going to grab this and actually align, excuse me, I'm going to go to modify, align this and this edge, okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and slide this back to the wall. So I'm also going to go to align from here to here, okay, so there is the dishwasher. Now, I believe you can choose on some different sizes, I'm not sure, nope, looks like it's only 24 inch. Um, so we're going to just leave it right there at that, okay? Um, now, that tells me a couple things. I mean, we can, this is supposed to be a little closer to this wall. That's okay. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this as a 36 by 84 um, and maybe make some adjustments to my walls a little bit later. But in this case, I think I'll stay with it. I could also change this cabinet if I wanted to, so it looks like I can go a little bit wider. Instead of doing the 18-inch, maybe instead we go to a 21-inch. Okay, and then in that case, what I can do is say, okay, we can play with this. And this is where I want you guys to have some creative freedom a little bit. I'll bust that over to there. And then that will allow me to take this and move it over three inches. Okay, and I didn't lock it together. So again, I'm going to just use my arrow keys. That looks pretty good, and it looks like I probably even can bump it a little bit more and go to a 24-inch cabinet if I wanted to, okay, and that would be fine. Um, that's not uncommon. 21's pretty, you know, not uncommon. Um, oh, and I know what it is also. I forgot, because I wanted to put a little space here. I know what it is. So I'm going to actually going to take this and go ahead and slide it over a little bit. 
I'm going to take this and move it over. And what I'm going to do is actually, I put a little spacer in here in my original design. You can put actually, and if you look around the cabinetry of your house, you're probably going to see where there's like a blank piece of wood that's like in between maybe a curve of a cabinet or something. Um, what those are are simply um, um, spacers, okay? They're fillers is what we call them. Revit actually has uh, fillers in there. So I'm actually going to show you that. So I'm going to go escape a couple times. Oh, what happened here? Where is my model? Oh, whew, that scared the heck out of me. Sorry. <laughs> I think I hit the F1 key. Whew, my heart just went out of my chest. Sorry for that drama there. I'm going to go to architecture. <laughs> and I'm going to go to component. Now I'm going to go to load family. Now if I go back into my English Imperial and back into my casework, base cabinets, there is something called a base filler, okay? I'm gonna say open. Um, in this case, I wanna again make the cursor to the back side, so I space bar, space bar, and I'm just gonna drag it onto the wall right about here. Okay, now if you look carefully, oh wow, that fit just perfectly there. Okay, that's perfect right there. So then, now I have a nice little spacer, so maybe when I pull this drawer, I can also open the door without hitting it. Okay, so it's just a spacer, there's nothing to it. And I'm just gonna take this and butt it back over like so. And that looks about where it's supposed to be. This was supposed to be really close to the edge of the door. Really what you'll have here is a piece of wood that will match your cabinetry along the side. So the door may actually be only 32 inches instead of 60 or it's 36, but we're gonna leave it as is right now, okay? Now, if I go to my 3D view, I want you to see this. So I'm gonna actually change this because I don't think this is in white. So I'm gonna go edit. And it isn't. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to the casework white. Uh, let me go, uh, what is it, uh, clad. Oops, clad. And it goes clad white. And I'm just going to go ahead and OK. Apply, OK. Now let's go take a peek in the 3D. So there is that piece I'm talking about. That's that filler piece right there. Okay, a lot of times you'll see those in there so you have a little bit more space to open up the door and the drawer without hitting each other. Um, it's that that way it's just the way it works okay like i said i may adjust this because usually what you'll have is a piece of whiteboard here and then your cat and then your base your your counter will be an inch and a half over here so we may and eventually move this door in about three inches okay when we get all the stuff done that's okay it looks good right now i've got my base cabinetry started perfect okay now what i want to do is do the same thing over here i'm going to put a cabinet on here and then we'll finish off with the refrigerator to this side and then ultimately then we'll add all our stuff on the top. Okay, so hopefully everyone is following along. Pretty straightforward. And again, you do have some options of some creativity on your own as long as you develop me a kitchen. Okay, if you want to do different uh, appliances, different sizes, you're more than welcome to. Okay, be creative. I'm going to do a quick control save because I'm going to save this model as is. And then I'm going to move back into my floor plan here again. Okay, all right. So now what I want to do is I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to add a base cabinet on this side. Uh, this one I will just butt up to the corner. Um, this one's going to just be a simple 30-inch uh, base. It's going to be a two-door, two-drawer. So I have a couple drawers and doors in here. So again, escape a couple times. Architecture, uh, component, load family, base cabinets. And I'm looking for a two-door, two-drawer base cabinet. So I'm looking double door, two drawers. Okay, that's what it's going to look like right there. I'm going to say open. Okay, in this case right now, it's going to be, again, the same thing where the cursor is. I'm going to hit my space bar, space bar, space bar. And I'm going to put this up and against the wall. Okay, I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to highlight this. I'm just going to go to my edit type and make sure that all my materials are matching the other ones. So I'm going to do my clad white cabinetry cloud white and again you may choose to do wood you're more than welcome to do cherries there's birch there's maple there's some other ones in there if you would like to go something different you're more than welcome to okay now what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna take my down arrow until it butts right up to that corner and I'm gonna kind of peek in on this and you don't have to be perfect as long as you're getting really close I may actually in this now in this case go out one arrow that looks good and then back up one arrow that looks pretty darn close right there okay I can live with that so now let's check in our 3D. And again, I like to check 3D a lot just to see that I'm getting what I want done. 
okay so there is that base cabinet there's my two drawers again so i've got some drawer space for utensils i've got lots of storage underneath this would be where i probably put a lot of my baking pans a lot of my pan pans um and this side over here you know we could put some some dishes or things of that nature okay you got drawers for utensils like i said same thing on this side all right now in the space right next to this i want to drop a refrigerator okay so i'm going to go look at the high end and the medium um, I'm, I ended up in the leather model doing the medium because it reminds me of the refrigerator I have in my house. It's the same style, and I may end up going back into that. Okay, so I'm going to go back into my main floor, architecture, component, load family. Back up into uh, Imperial. Go down to, again, specialty equipment, domestic. And I'm going to look at the high end first. So let's go look at some of what they've got because their refrigerators are pretty nice now these are more like sub z's so they're taller narrower they're supposed to be built into your cabinetry okay there's basically one with a glass door okay over under another glass door side by side stainless these are all really pretty expensive type um, refrigerators okay usually you build them into your cabinetry they're thinner but taller so you can still store the same amount of uh, food in there so they, they're supposed to be cab what they call cabinet depth so it's supposed to give you a nice flush feel um, I'm going to actually go back to the medium, mid-range. I'm going to do this one here. Uh, they have two different styles. I'm actually going to go with this one here because this is almost exactly what I have sitting in my house right now. It's what I had in the old house too. So I'm going to go with something I like, something I know. And I'm going to say open. And again, it's the same thing, the refrigerator here. Where the cursor is, is the back. So i got to use my space bar until I see the cursor facing the wall. And then I'm just going to come in here. And drop it onto the middle of the wall that's fine and I'll come back in here and, and adjust it in a moment now I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this real quick do a couple different things one I'm use my arrow keys to push it towards the wall like that and I'm also make sure it's butted up to the cabinet now most likely you are have a little bit of space in there in reality but again we're just doing a model here it's okay I also want to get this refrigerator out of the way. I'm just going to leave the word R on there like you see it in the whole model that we have in our, our PDF file. So I'm going to go to edit, type. First thing I'm going to do is, it was a show label, that's fine, but the label instead of refrigerator, I'm just going to put the capital R and make it real simple and say apply. Um, the appliance, I want the back of this because this, in my house, you can kind of see it. I'm going to go ahead and do a semi-polished stainless steel so the whole thing looks stainless steel. That's just my my choice you could do something else if you want and I'm gonna hit okay so this is now my refrigerator what this is indicating is how the doors open all right if I take a peek at the 3d model there is my refrigerator right there okay it looks pretty good right now now again the door opening there's gonna be so be a set of cabinets up here based upon the model I believe like in my house there's a piece of wood on this side and then you're gonna have some cabinetry above this so this would be kind of closed off and you slide it in in a more, I guess, modern style home. Um, I don't have a way to do that yet. I'll see if I can find something for a um, refrigerator surround. I don't know if there is one, but I'm going to look on RevitCity.com to see if there is one. And I may incorporate it somewhere down the road. Okay. In the meantime, this looks okay. If I want to make it really accurate, I could also move the door. But in my opinion, this is really good where we're at. So now what I'm going to do is a quick control save, control S, because I've got kind of the base of my kitchen done. Now out in this area here will be our island. Okay, and as soon as I can figure that out, I will show you how we create our island here. All right. Now looking from our main floor, this is where we're at right now. There's our opening. And I can actually, if I wanted to, I may move this to two feet six. Just move it a little bit further. That looks pretty good. And now it looks a little bit more like what I see in the model. Okay. So, at this point, I've got all my base stuff done. So now what I want to do is start putting cabinetry above. All right? And that's all the dashed lines you see in that drawing. You'll see that it's above the dishwasher. There's cabinetry. There's cabinetry a little bit to right about here to the edge of here. I'm going to show you how to put in a vent hood. And then we're going to put cabinetry across and across the top of our refrigerator. So I'm actually going to start with the refrigerator and kind of work my way back towards the dishwasher. Because the ones above here are actually going to be custom. All right. So now what I'm going to do is hit escape a couple times. I'm going to go to component. I'm going to go in here to load family. And now what we're going to do is go back in Imperial. 
and I'm going to get back into my casework. Okay, you're going to see where just certain photos we're going to use a lot. Casework, specialty equipment, plumbing. We'll get to electrical. We'll get lights and stuff going on pretty soon. Okay, casework. We're going to go with wall cabinets. All right, now, in some cases, depending on your house, I have, in my house, I have a wall with tall cabinets. So these are like full-size cabinets where you can actually go in here. Now, this one could be for potentially uh, built-in. So this potentially could be for like a double oven. That's what would be in mine. Okay, you put a double oven in here with a little bit of storage under here and a storage above. That's what I have. I have all my cookbooks actually up on top. And then we have a double oven right here. Okay, if you wanted to add that in here, you could. There's really not a lot of space for it um, based upon the design of this. I, I'll be up front. This would not be a kitchen I would be in love with because I do like having a double oven, um, but that's just my opinion. Okay, tall cabinet, double door. I have a bank of these. I have three of these in a row on a wall. This is basically my pantry in my house. So in some cases, you would take those and maybe have them somewhere next to your refrigerator. I've seen them surround a refrigerator. Um, and then people put panels on the refrigerator so it all looks like double doors all the way down the wall, okay? Um, in this case, we're not going to use them, but I do, do want you to see that they are there. These are full height, okay? So you basically, can, if you wanted to, you can make one of these cabinets if you really wanted to into a full height one, and that way we can call it, quote, a pantry, all right? And that's what you'd have. But since we already have our own pantry in here, we don't need one of these, okay? That's, that's why this is here. Uh, below. So I'm going to go back up one and go back into wall shelves. Okay, in this case, the first one I want to go to is um, we're just going to do a double door. I don't want glass. Uh, I'm going to do double door wall. Okay, this is it right here. It's going to be elevated. I'm going to customize this. Now, my cabinets on my wall are going to be 42 inch cabinets. This is a higher end home. Most of those are going to be 42 inches or above. If it's a really high end home, it may go all the way to the ceiling. Um, on a tall ceiling, that may be a second set of cabinetries with little flip doors, or they could be decorative doors, so you have lights in there, uh, depending on the home. In this case, like in my house, I'm doing 42-inch cabinetry, which is really it's, you know, moderate, high quality. Okay, so I'm going to go in here and customize that. I'm going to say open. Now, I know, because I've already done this, what I need. Okay, so I'm going to go here to edit to type. And instead of, in this case, 42 inches, um, I'm going to go ahead... Upper cabinet, double door wall. This is a 42 inch. Oh, because I've already made though the width of it's 42. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to duplicate this. I call this um, above refrigerator, uh, above refrigerator cabinets. You don't have to. You can call it something else, but above refrig, uh, refrigerator cabinets. And I'm going to say okay. Now the custom. The refrigerator is, I think, 30 inches, so I'm going to make these 30 inches wide, 2 foot 6. The top of cabinet will be at 7 feet, but I'm going to make the cabinet 3 feet 6 inches, which is also, if you look at it, 32 inches. No, actually, excuse me. These are not 42. These are actually uh, squeezed down. These are going to be 26 inches. I apologize. 26. Because these are compressed. The depth of these, normally your base, your base cabinets are at two feet, your top cabinets are at one foot. These above your refrigerator are usually at two feet because your refrigerator obviously is, is much deeper, you gotta reach over the top. So we're gonna make this instead of a one foot deep cabinet, we're gonna make it a two foot deep cabinet. I'm also gonna edit my material right now and we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna type in clad or you can type in white, it would come up. Okay, I'm going to go OK. Uh, door material, same thing, just clad white. Um, again, if you want to do uh, some kind of a wood, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to bring them out here on the wall. I'm going to hover right here, OK, right about the center of the refrigerator. Now, this tells me, I'm going to hit Escape here real quick. I'm going to click on this. It tells me I can actually, I think this may be a 36-inch refrigerator, so let me highlight this. Come on, let's go. Oh, man, it's already on. Oh, no, that's the visual. I don't need to see the visual. Sorry, view off. Don't want to save. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, go back to this. I apologize there. And I'm going to go back into my edit type. And instead of 30 inches on the width, height is 2 foot 2, depth is 2 feet, top of cabinet 7. I'm going to make this at uh, 3 feet. And I'm going to apply. 
and OK. OK, and there we go. That's what it should look like. It's a little bit off there, so that's OK. I'm actually going to take this, uh, highlight it, and I'm just going to take my arrow key, and that's all it was, one tap, and now I'm lined up with the refrigerator. OK, so let's go take a peek at this. Again, as I put things in, let's go look. So there's my cabinet. Now that obviously isn't going to work. OK, uh, the top of this at seven feet um, is not where I'm going to want this. Um, I'm trying to think of, do, 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 do. I want these, let me see what the height of my walls are, sorry, I gotta see what my height of my walls are, they're nine feet, okay, so that means I want this within one foot, so I want the actual height of this at eight feet, I apologize, so I'm gonna go back in, elevation from, oh, the elevation here, uh, no, 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 I want to go back to here, oops, let me go to edit, I want to make sure my, um, do, 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 do. top of cabinet is at eight feet apply okay see if that does anything there did not didn't move it come on Let me go back and try one more time eight foot top of cabinet three foot okay so in this case now I'm gonna have to change my elevation so my elevation here should be six feet that's what it is oops cancel hold on ah uh, sorry guys. Okay, let me go back into here. Six, tick mark, enter. Okay, that elevates it. There we go. That's what I wanted right there. Okay, so the elevation should be at six feet. All right. Um, for the other cabinets, it'll be at 54 inches, which is four feet six. This has to be above my refrigerator. That's why the elevation was off. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of blow up back up here a little bit. I want to kind of orbit into this and just kind of see what's going on. Um, it, it looks like my cabinets, I can't tell, it looks like they're maybe possibly buried into there. Um, I cannot tell. Do I have a little bit of space? Let me get really, really tight in here. And this is the game you got to play. It's a little bit hard. It looks like I do have space there. Oh, that's a rewind. I don't want to do a rewind. Um, this is the hard part of this is that, ugh, I hate this orbit tool. Yeah, it looks like we did okay. That's what we want. There it is. Okay, there's a little bit of gap right there. This is slide underneath. And so we'll make the rest of these at 8 feet. That'll give them a 42. But their elevation instead of 6 feet will be at 54 inches or 4 foot 6 inches. That's usually your elevation and distance from floor to bottom half or the bottom edge of your upper cabinets. Okay, so there is where we are so far. Okay, I got my first cabinets in. So let's go back into our main floor. I'm going to do a quick control save. Now I'll start adding in some cabinets going this way. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in here a 30 inch by 42 inch tall cabinet. Now they don't make them 42, so we're going to have to customize again. So again, escape, architecture, component, load family. I'm going to do an upper cabinet, but this one I want to do a double door. So I'm going to go uh, double door wall. I'm going to say open. <laughs> Now, in this case, I want the elevation to be, from this one, it'll be 4 foot 6. Uh, I'm going to go, actually, I'll edit my type real quick, first of all. Okay, this one I'm going to change. I'm going to do, again, I'm going to do, um, do, 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 no, I want a 30, no, I want the 30 inch. Oops, sorry. So this is going to be a 30 inch wide, sorry. Um, that's all my choices right there. 30 inches wide, but I want to do a duplicate of the 30, and I'm going to make this 30 by... 42 inches tall. Okay, I'm just going to put that in there so I know it's a 42 inch tall cabinet. I'm going to say okay. All right, here we go. So I'm going to change my material. I want my material to be white clad on both of them. And again, say consistent. Again, if you're using a wood, go ahead and use a wood. I may come back and change those down the road. The depth will stay at one foot. The height is going to be 42 inches. Okay, so these are 42 inch cabinets. Uh, the top of cabinet will be at 8 feet. Um, the width will be 2 feet 6 inches, which is, yeah, 30 inches. I'm going to say OK. OK, now I'm going to push this on the wall and click right here and hit Escape. I'm going to take and highlight and use my arrow key to butt flush, uh, flush with that one there. OK, now there is my upper cabinet. Now let's go take a peek to make sure it is doing what we're asking it to do. It looks like this one's actually lower than this one, so let's go check its elevation. It's at four foot six. Um, this one, then I'm going to take instead of six feet. I apologize. I'm going to make this one five foot 
10 inches and that will flush it and that's there we go that's what i wanted it's nice tight gap right there flush on the top there's my model and this is the game you got to play understand you're like oh man he just keeps changing everything you're right you're going to see me change this a lot as i go along i'm constantly constantly adjusting everything i may come back and change this out from this range later on and think you know what i'm gonna go a little higher in and i'm gonna put a they have one it's a cabinet with an opening i can put an oven in there i can put a cooktop on top I, I, who knows? I may play some games. I may change my refrigerator. I make it a little bit narrower with one of those higher end models. Um, it just, again, once we get this done, you will have some creative freedom here. Okay. Um, in this case, right now, though, we're just going to go ahead and stay with this tradition. Just follow my lead. You get an opportunity to do your stuff here in a little bit. Okay. Let's go back into our main floor. Okay, right next to this, I'm going to put a thin cabinet. It's going to be on this wall, matching this angle. It'll be kind of right butted up to the stove. Um, that's probably going to require me eventually to maybe have a, a, a filler here. I'm going to have to add a filler here. Um, there's an upper filler. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But what I'm going to do is I want to do an 18-inch cabinet. It's a single door. I'm going to make it 14 inches tall. Okay, or not 14, excuse me, 42 inches tall. So in this case, I'm again go to component, and hopefully you're starting to see a pattern here. I'm going to go to upper cabinet. Uh, I'm doing a single door. Uh, you can do it with glass if you want to get fancy. I may actually do this one. I didn't do my other one with glass, but I may go ahead and make these two by the stove a little bit fancier. It's your call. Uh, I just want to see what it looks like, and if I don't like it, I always can come back and change it. Okay, I'm going to say open. Now in this case, I'm going to go to edit type. I am going to duplicate, actually I'm going to pick the 18 inch one, that's important. I'm going to duplicate that 18 inch and I'm going to make it an 18 by 42 inch tall. I'm going to say open. Okay, excuse me. I'm going to change the material to white. Again, staying consistent. All right, and change here. Glass will stay glass. You can. I think they have a frosted glass if you wanted that. I'm just going to leave it cabinets, material. We're going to look good there. I don't know what the finish is going to be on this. I don't think there is one. Okay, depth will be at one foot. And actually, in this case, I'm going to cheat it because I know what I need to do because I played with this. We're actually going to make this 14 inches. Otherwise, the way the bend works, it's going to run into each other. So I want you to make that one foot two. The height of this, though, I want you to make three foot six, which is 42 inches. Okay, elevation, top of the uh, cabinet will be at eight feet. All right, and the width will be one foot six. Say okay. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to paste it on that wall right there. Okay, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. That looks good right there. Hit escape. I'm going to go right here, and I'm just going to kind of edge this in. Now, what I'll do on this one is I'm actually going to use the align tool on this. And the truth of the matter is actually I'm probably going to leave it right here because when I have my hood on here, you're supposed to have a three-inch distance between the edge of your stove here, oven, Okay, range to the edge of your cabinet because you have to fit a, um, uh, a range hood in there. So in this case, I think I'm just going to leave that gap right there. That looks pretty good. Um, and then what I'm going to do in this case is i got to put a little filler right here. Um, that's what I'm going to do next. And then I'll probably end up button this up into that filler. Um, and for some reason, this looks way narrower than it should be, but I'll look and see. If I've got this right, in just a second, uh, four foot six in the four, 18 inch four foot. Let me just double check. Do I have the one foot four? I do. Let me just say okay. This one actually may have to go even wider. We'll have to see. Let me go to my 3D. That's what we're looking at glass wise right there. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put a little filler right in between these two. That's similar to what we did over here. I'm gonna put a little filler right there. It's gonna be approximately, oh I don't know. It's four maybe. Uh, three or four inches. I guess it's about four and a half inches, maybe five. We'll see. We'll play with that, but I'm going to show you how to put that in there. We need to butt it up right here so we can kind of get it close, and then we'll play with this cabinet until it butts into it. We may have to actually make it deeper. Um, like I said, I did different utilities or different uh, appliances in the other model, and so each one you're just going to have to adjust accordingly. Okay, I apologize. This is the way it works. I'm going to go ahead at this point. Component load family i'm gonna do an upper cabinet filler i'm gonna say open 
Uh, this one here, you got some choices, I believe. Your upper cabinet filled. Maybe you don't. I think you just got to have to adjust it when you're ready. I'm going to go in here and do edit type. Uh, it's going to be a depth of one foot. Okay, fine. Height, I'm going to make it 42 inches, so three foot six. I'm going to make the top of that piece. It's going to be at eight feet. Everything stays the same. Uh, cabinet material, we're just going to do that clad white so it matches everything else that we're doing. Um, and then I'm going to say apply. I probably should have, oh, that was dumb. I probably should have duplicated that. Um, and then I'm going to say OK and put it up against this wall like so. Okay, so there is that piece. All right, what it looks like in the three-dimensional is that piece right there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is try to butt this into it a little bit better. All right, and this may be, um, this was my original first plan, and I didn't have it all fine-tuned compared to the other one. So this wall may be a little bit different than what I just designed in before, so I'm going to have to play a little bit of a game here to make this work. Um, in this case, I can maybe even get away with a, oh, 18, I can maybe go 21 inch. Let's try to do a 21 inch here. I'm going to do an edit type. I'm actually going to duplicate this to a 21 by 42. And again, it's all whatever, I mean, if you're doing your other home style and this doesn't fit, you may have to use an 18. The other model I just worked on to do the before this vi uh, video, I had to use an 18. So it just depends on what you have for the wall there. I know some of you were concerned about the angle of the wall and we're having struggles with its distance. Just work to make your cabinets fit so it looks correct, okay? Um, we all may be off a little bit different in our cabinets, but I'll accept it that you have the cabinets there, okay? That's all I'm looking for is that you actually know how to put the cabinets and that they are installed correctly when I look at them. I'm going to go ahead and do my clad white. Clad white. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead, my depth will be at one foot, this will be at three feet six inches, the height of the cabinet will be at uh, eight feet, and I'm going to say OK. Now from here, I'm just going to go ahead and move this, and as you can see, we got a problem in this corner right here, okay, you can see we got how we're going to get this to butt up, I don't think that's going to work, I'm going to have to stay with the 18, okay, so I'm going to go back, and that's this is the game you play, okay, I go back to my 18 by 42, no big deal. Okay, in this case right now, I'll go ahead and kind of move this over a little bit. And then I'm actually going to make this kind of bump out instead of the 14 inch, I'm going to make this an 18 inch deep. So I'm going to kind of play with some numbers. So where in this case, the depth was one foot two, I'm going to go one foot six, apply and OK and see what happens. Now, a little bit too long. All right, so again, I'm going to customize my cabinet. And, and in truth, this is why kitchens are so darn expensive, because you may have to have custom cabinetry built to fit the model that you have. And that is the truth. A lot of cabinets are custom built to your house. So in this case, instead of 18 inches, I am going to go 1 foot 5. Apply and OK. Now we're getting closer, OK? Now if I come to go ahead and butt this up a little bit more this way, to that corner, we are really close, so maybe it's one foot four and a half inches. Uh, I think the other day I was playing around, I got to one foot four and three quarter inches. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of take that on a little bit right here, and I'm going to go one four and three quarters, 1.475, and apply. Okay, we're really, really close right there. That actually looks pretty darn on the money. I'm just going to slide maybe this in just a little bit tighter so it's just right on that corner and there you go. There's my cabinet. Now I don't mind that gap right there because I need to have a hood in between here. This probably should be a little bit smaller and that's okay. Now let's just take a real quick peek in the 3D because I know this video is getting long but that's what we're looking at right now. Okay. Now I'm going to copy this cabinet to the other side so they're going to have a duplicate cabinet to the other side of this. Hopefully it will fit the same way. So I'm going to go back to my main floor, control save. I'm going to highlight this cabinet. I'm going to do a copy, and I'm going to move it right over to this side over here and put it right here somewhere on the wall. Oops, hold on. Did I not copy it? Hold on. Which one am I trying to copy? Uh, I need this one. I want to do a copy. Okay, I'm going to do it from here, the middle. And I'm going to put one right about there. Okay, so we're pretty close. So in this case, I'm just going to take this and try to move it about the same distance as the other one. Just kind of move it down the wall a little bit so it's about right there in the corner. 
that right there that looks good we may have to play around with that a little bit more okay so now I've got that piece there and now what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna go ahead and do a uh, 18 by 42 inch no I'm gonna do a 30 by 42 inch double door on the top actually I'm gonna do three cabinets up here I'm gonna do an 18 inch right here and then a 42 by 30 or a 30 inch right here so I'm actually gonna stack them um, so it'll make sense in a second here okay I'm gonna go component load family I'm gonna go to a single door upper cabinet single door no glass okay I'm gonna say open now this one, I'm going to go with the 18, but I'm going to go ahead again. I'm going to change the style from an 18 to an 18 by 42. Okay, oh, uh, this is with glass. I can't do that one. In this case, I'm just going to go back to 18. Because now I'm going to have to actually go in here and duplicate this one. Okay, so it's not glass. Okay, panel material. Um, I don't know why that's doing that. But let me do escape again. Component, load family, single door, uh, open. Okay, I'm going to drop this to uh, upper filler wall, upper single door glass, uh, upper cabinet single door wall. Sorry, I was clicking the wrong one. So here's my 18. I do need to edit it. I do need to duplicate it and make it an 18 by 42, no glass. I probably should have put the other one as glass. That was probably dumb. 18 by 42 inch tall no glass I'm going to add that on there okay material is going to be clad white and again I apologize the video is getting long but you can see it takes a long time to do this detail uh, height uh, all the other stuff I'm going to go here the height of it's going to be three feet six the top of the cabinet is going to be at eight feet and we're going to call that good I'm going to place that on the wall. I'm going to kind of eyeball it into its place. That looks pretty good right there. And now I'm going to hit escape and just kind of move this a little bit more to the right. Okay. And then this one here, I may actually, I'm just going to leave it right there. I could probably pull this out just to slide this a little bit or move it a little, just a little tiny, tiny amount. Maybe so it's like about right about there. Okay. This one's not too bad. Okay. Hold on. Okay, I guess again, I can't see it right there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so there's what I'm looking at. All right, again, looking 3D. There's that cabinet opening this way. This one will open that way. I'm going to put a double cabinet above here. Okay, and then we'll finish off with a range hood and call this part of the kitchen done, uh, except for the countertops. Okay, so again, going back into my main floor, I'm going to go to component family. I'm going to do a 30 by 42 inch. So I'm going to go to here and look for a double door. No glass. Okay. Open. I am going to go here and make sure that I change that style. Uh, upper cabinet. Do I have my upper cabinet filler? Double door. I'm going to do a 30 by 42 inch tall. I already made one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. If you didn't, go ahead and duplicate that. Make it 30 by 42. I'm going to put it right on this wall, right about here, hit escape. Okay, I'm going to kind of walk this one over. Now, this should be even to the edge of the dishwasher. Okay, so right about there. Okay, so that means I can either put a filler here or what I probably am going to do is to match like below and give me a little bit more space between these two. I'm going to slide this one over. I could also use my align tool. Okay, so maybe that'd be the better way to go. I'll say, all right, modify, align this cabinet and this cabinet. Okay, so now they're aligned. And me, I'll modify one more time. I'll say, I want this and the edge of there. So everything's together. Double check that one more time, sorry. Uh, this cabinet and that cabinet there. Okay, so now I have a gap right here. So let's do an upper wall filler again that will fit right in between. We can make it fit so it's exactly right where it's supposed to be. So again, escape a couple times. Let's go to architecture. Let's go to component. And again, I'm going to go up here to load family and do an upper cabinet filler. I'm going to say open. Okay, again, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to take and 
go to my filler oops my fillers because I should have one uh upper camera filler wall okay again I'm gonna go to edit type and just make sure all the re recent one we did because it is the last one we used so it's kind of been saved this way is good to go I'm gonna say okay and then I'm just gonna kind of stick this thing up against the wall down here like so and that actually works out pretty darn spiffy okay that actually turned out perfectly in size all right now again depending on yours you may have to make this a little bit smaller and one of the things you can do to make it smaller you can actually just eyeball it by dragging on those little carrot things to adjust okay it, you can it, so there's some things you can do to modify by just simply dragging it and it doesn't have to be exact so you don't always have to go in and keep typing the numbers in you could actually drag it to size <coughs> now excuse me go into my 3d there you go Got my cabinetry up. It's going to kind of look a little bit here. Oop, no. Okay. Go in here. There's what I'm looking at at my kitchen right now. Okay. So at this point, what would be going on is I would have a, um, from here, the edge here over to the refrigerator would be a ca uh, countertop and a countertop over here over the top of this. Again, there'll be some kind of built on side here where the, ca or the uh, countertop will go over the top of this and stick out about an inch and a half on this side. Okay, so ultimately this door is going to end up shrinking down to probably a 32 inch door instead of a 36, which I can do pretty quickly with that. Oops, that's a partition. I can do that pretty quickly in my upper view. Okay, so at this point I've got all my kitchen stuff in except for the range hood. Now I'm going to put a hood in here. Um, I thought about putting a microwave up there like a built-in, like some small cabinets up here with a microwave above it, and you could do that if you chose to. That would be your own custom thing. You could literally duplicate this cabinet here and put it over in this, make a, you know, except for instead of making it two feet deep, make it one foot deep, and then right below it, there is a microwave that you could put underneath this, okay? I'm not doing it that way because I'm going to put my microwave in the island. That's my intention. I'm going to actually try to customize the island where I can have an opening for a microwave to slide in um, into the into the actual island instead of in and above my uh, uh, my range here. So I'm going to actually add a real excuse me range hood. Okay, so I'm going to go in here back to my main floor, hit escape a couple times, and what I'm going to do is put a range hood above this. So I'm going to go to component, load family. I'm going to go back into Imperial, down to, again, specialty equipment, domestic. In this case, i got to go to high end. Now, what I was talking about is mid-range. You could go in here, and there is a microwave oven. You could actually build that in. So what I'm talking about is you could actually put the cabinets and then put this right below the cabinets. You would have to play around with that. That's on you if you'd like to do that. Um, go high end here. Uh, they don't, I don't think have a microwave that I know it's right here built in microwave so here's an example where you build this in so like for me I'm gonna have this in a cabinet and this is gonna slide right in I'm gonna take a, a, a built-in single um, this is basically an oven built-in oven built-in microwave oven built-in double micro so this would actually fit into some casework so there's actual casework where you can put this in okay um, this would actually fit in that one where I showed you the tall cabinet with a hole in it this is what this would slide into Okay, in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to a range hood. Um, right here, range, where is it? Uh, uh, hood Island. That's if you're putting your, um, your uh, cooktop in the island. We're going to do a wall range. Okay, hood wall. And I'm going to say open. And I'm basically going to stick it right here on this wall. And I'm going to say rotate after placement. This is one that gets a little tricky. Um, I think I'm going to rotate. Oh, rotate I think about right here 45 degrees and that did not do what I wanted it to do so I'm going to go here again and I'm actually going to do rotate I'm going to take it from here and rotate it another 45 degrees and now what I'll do is move it okay and this is the thing I'm still not used to and I'll be up front I'm still trying to figure all this stuff out um, I'm not a master at it by any stretch of the imagination but I'm basically going to put this right here in that spot there um, I'm going to highlight that range hood. Okay, now it gets a little bit harder. So you got to really kind of like the lines. Because I need to modify this, I'm going to take this symbol off. I'm going to keep it as stainless steel. Um, everything looks good. The width of it, I'm going to go right now is at three feet. I'm going to actually make this at 30 inches. 
to start. Oh, crap. Um, 30, oops, 30 inches. And I'm going to say apply and OK. Um, and then I'm going to take a peek at it. I think it may be too low. It is. Uh, there's my there's my range hood. Oops, nope. Let's go right here. There's my range hood. Okay, elevation from main floor. This should be at five feet. Okay, it'll take a second to pop up. That's the elevation. You should have a two foot, a two foot distance between the top of your stove to the bottom of your hood. So the top of the stove is at three feet, three feet one approximately. This will be at five feet at the bottom. Okay, so now looking at it, there is my range hood. Now it looks like it may be bumping into my cabinets. I'm going to take a quick peek at that in my top view um, so I can make some small adjustments if necessary. It looks like it's a little bit on that one. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of uh, slide this over just the slightest little tiny bit. Um, like about right about there, maybe. I, you know, in this case, it may not be that big a deal. Um, so in this case, I think that's fine. Um, that looks pretty good. It looks like it's pretty evened up uh, over the stove. There's the edge of the stove. There's the edge here. I think this is pretty darn good. Okay, I can live with it. It may be a slightly off, but it looks good to me. Okay, I'm going to do a quick control save. I'm going to do one more peek at my 3D so I can get a real fun, final look at what I'm looking at. Okay, and at this point, we're going to stop right here because I want you to get this part of the kitchen done. And then the next video, we'll talk about ca uh, countertops and how to create the island that is in that view to finish our kitchen off. That video will occur after we get back from the break. Okay, in the meantime, get this done, saved, get your bathroom done, and the holes all punched in where they're supposed to. Save this file, upload it to Schoology so I can look at it as your final exam. With that said, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I again apologize for the length of the video, but as you can see, it takes a lot of work to do a good kitchen. Good luck with this. I look forward to seeing your plans.